everybody, I'm Michael from One Sky Astrology, and this video is going to take a look at the full moon in constellation Leo. That's going to be happening on February 19th, 2019. So I make these lunar cycle videos in order to try to help people who are interested in living in uh, a flow with the uh, cycles of the moon. I want to give a little outline of that cycle. It starts with the new moon, which is a time of low energy. So it's a great time to go inward, a time of stillness, a time to plant intentions, a time to take account of what we want to build and commit that intention. And as we do that, we can watch that seed that we planted sprout. We can cultivate it. We can work to grow it. And then at the full moon, when energies are very high, when there's a lot of energy available, it's the time to work, to harvest, to manifest, to create. And oftentimes, if you pay attention, you'll notice that what we harvest at the full moon, what's manifested, what happens, whether it's consciously directed or not, is directly related to the intentions that we set knowingly or unknowingly, right around the new moon. So, that new moon was in conservative, reserved, kind of cold Capricorn. And the full moon is going to be in Leo. But in the time that it's taken the moon to move from Capricorn to Leo, that's uh, the moon in Leo, and the sun has moved into the constellation of Aquarius. And you may be looking at something that doesn't seem quite right to you. I'm using astronomically accurate 13 sign astrology called True Sidereal Astrology. So check that out in uh, some of my videos and uh, look it up. We're using the exact size and location of the constellations, the actual heavens, as opposed to an arbitrary zodiac. This is very different from mainstream forms of astrology, but it is the way the sun, it is where the sun is, is in the constellation of Aquarius. So the constellation of Aquarius is definitely different than constellation Capricorn by uh, a pretty large margin. Um, Aquarius is very, uh, it's an air sign, so there's uh, a lot more movement than in Capricorn, which is, which is fixed earth, very steady, very stable. Aquarius is very um, dynamic, very airy, um, definitely concerned with uh, progress, with truth, with change, with, um, there's, there's an air of rebelliousness and an air of um, kind of marching to the beat of uh, your own drum as, is the influence of Aquarius. It's where we find our true self and where we find our, our, own, uh, our own unique expression where Capricorn tends to be concerned more with like orthodox structures, um, you, you know, bodies, more conservative bodies, um, things like that. So I bring all this up because that moon in Leo is going to be reflecting the light of that Aquarius sun. So all of this alignment is going to be reflecting off the moon and that moon is in the degree of a fixed star called Regulus, which we're going to get to later because it really plays into, really ties into some of the other alignments that are happening here. So um, Regulus is of a pretty Martian nature. It's uh, kind of a, a kind of a strong militant direct almost like pugnacious influence it's it's very very uh, very strong 
very strong, um, genuine, gen generally a blessing, but um, sometimes comes with its with its price. And the moon there is going to be trying up to Mars, which has just entered Aries. So this is great. This is great because Mars is very happy in Aries. It rules Aries, so it's in its exaltation. And it's conjunct uh, Uranus, which is just finishing up Pisces. So just on the Pisces-Aries cusp, which is uh, a cusp that is... Um, a great balance between kind of the all, the all, the the spirit, the the big picture, and the individual. Right on this cusp is the planet Uranus, which rules Aquarius, where the sun is, and Mars, which is very similar in its nature to Regulus, where the moon is. Um, these two planets in conjunction are making a sextile up to the sun. So there's a lot of harmonious energy with this full moon alignment and this conjunction of Mars and Uranus here. So Mars and Uranus, when they get together, are going to combine Mars's drive, its determination, its assertiveness, especially in Aries. There's a quality of cutting right through, getting directly to what is wanted, what is needed. Um, and Uranus, especially Uranus in Pisces, is concerned with um, like idealism, concerned with ideals like uh, like uh, a better world, like progress and truth, uh, progress towards that better world. So there's going to be an energy here of drive towards creating, manifesting, taking that full moon energy and manifesting the world we want to live in, like the, quote, be the change you want to see in the world. That's definitely the energy of this alignment here, with the sextile to the Aquarius sun and trine to Leo moon in the degree of Regulus. And on the other side of the chart here, on the, on the right in the area of Sagittarius, is a stellium, a grouping of four planets in conjunction, or I should say three planets and a node. And I'm not going to argue about whether Pluto is a planet or not. We'll call it one. So we have, um, in, in, close, in close alignment, we have Venus conjunct to Saturn. That's a one degree conjunction. And Venus conjoined uh, up to Pluto at four degrees. And all of this is also conjunct the south node of the moon. Now, the south node tends to be concerned with the past. And when you get Venus and Saturn together, there's a quality of like, you know, classical, classical values, like antique values. It's like old school. Uh, there's, a, especially in, in Sagittarius, it could be very concerned with philosophy. It could be uh, very concerned with the way things used to be. So this, this is a conjunction that is gonna, gonna create a lot of energy in the, in the, in the area of um, that kind of maybe nostalgic, maybe, maybe looking back and uh, remembering the way we used to be. I would, I would think with Sagittarius's quality of expanse and, and drive toward philosophy that it would be more like looking back to the way we think the world was once, to those maybe golden days, the better days. Um, and there's going to be an energy of that that is that is making actually making a pretty pretty stressful, uh, or I should say, making stress relationships to the sun and moon. So we have this uh, Venus Saturn conjunction making a semi square, tending to create mm, obstacles, maybe friction, maybe situations that are a little bit more difficult to navigate. And the Sesca Quadrate 
aspect to the moon, which tends to kind of kind of polarize away, like maybe just want nothing to do with that. So at this time, I think if you look at these alignments, this full moon will be more oriented toward the future, the futuristic look of Uranus and that drive of Mars and Aries to manifest that and less interested in the energies of the past or the way things used to be. So moving ahead to that future, maybe taking this energy and using it to manifest the world we want, knowing that you can't really ever go back. Um, although, you know, things go round and round and they say there's nothing new under the sun um, this is a time to bring that, bring that idealistic, bring that um, creative energy, that utopian vision into focus and harness our drive and our doing, our creative nature and our assertiveness to build that. Another thing I want to notice is that in Uranus here supporting the Sun is a Mercury-Neptune conjunction. And this is actually a very close conjunction to 37 minutes. So this is a zero degree conjunction. And when you get Mercury and Neptune together, um, there tends to be uh, a little bit of muddled logic. Um, it's, it's, it's not a very auspicious influence for thinking about things in a very linear, or rational, or left-brained manner. But it does lend itself to insight and uh, direct knowledge. And uh, while communication might be a little unclear, might be um, kind of nebulous or cloudy, um, it is it is a time where this energy of looking forward of uh, of utopian vision of um, idealism creating the world we want is very supported because Neptune in Aquarius is very much in alignment with that um, that vision that dream of a better world that dream of a of a of a world that's more. Uh, aligned with the, the higher truth of things and uh, the higher truth of ourselves. Both both this this Aquarian both this Aquarian Sun and Mercury Neptune conjunction. This energy here in Aquarius and this whole stellium in Sagittarius. Both of these constellations have always imparted an, an, an element of, of being interested in the truth, of being driven by truth, being, um, you know, rather, rather uninterested in, uh, in uh, fallacy or falsehood. And uh, with this Martian influence being so strong with Mars and Aries here, um, connected to Uranus. Uranus is a planet which is always reflecting our relationship with higher self, with our truth, with our um, what makes us unique, what makes us individual. It's very individualistic. And with the moon in Leo here, Leo has a reputation for being somewhat dramatic. Um, there may be a, a real drive to to express our truth. With the moon in the degree of Regulus and Mars so prominent, making these relationships to the sun and moon, I want to encourage everyone to watch their aggression, watch their force, and you know be you know be in alignment with the truth, be in alignment with the higher higher ideals of truth and your higher self and watch the tendency to be in alignment with <laughs> what you want and um y you know the kind of the kind of uh the kind of selfish kind of blinders that mars especially mars and aries can cause us to put on so this is going to be a full moon of looking forward 
of manifesting energy that's looking forward to creating, manifesting the world that we want to live in, a world in accord with our truth, our higher, our higher ideals, our higher values. And while there is going to be that energy of retrospection, of looking back, I encourage you to, um, you, you know, not, not mind too much if that's a little challenged or if we're looking back and, um, you know, feeling a need to let go, feeling a need to, to jettison some old cargo. This is a great energy for that too, with that south node in alignment in conjunction with Pluto, Venus, and Saturn. All right, I think that about does it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.